What's poppin' everyone? We are here with the final week of the regular season of our draft league, week eight, right before playoffs. And I would love to hopefully end this season off on a positive note with a win and a positive record at that. Taking on Shuckle King, and essentially he has to win this in order to make playoffs, whereas I'm already secure for playoffs, I'm locked in, so this game doesn't impact me at all, while his fate hangs in the balance. Should be a fun match, and uh, his team is pretty solid though, I should say. He's got the Great Tusk, the Golden Goat, the Zarud, the Azumarill, like you already know where this is going. Strong team. Two Terra Captains on his team are Jolteon and Espeon, shout out to the Evolutions. Check that video out if you haven't seen it, the last video I did was an Evolution team, pretty crazy. But um... Yeah, I definitely think that Jolteon is the bring over Espeon for this matchup just because Terra Ice is so deadly with the electric and ice coverage and potential Calm Mind. It kind of just tears apart my team pretty well in terms of, uh, you know, just not having great switch-ins for those moves, but I do have a lot of checks on my team that I've prepared for uh, for this matchup. And I do assume that Grey Tusk is obviously going to be there as well as Golden Go for this matchup, so... Those mons are, are definite brings. Azumarill is a tough mon to switch into. Speaking of tough mon to switch into, what do I got for a choice bandit Azumarill? It's going to be tough. So have to play our cards right and check a lot of his team. The matchup, I think, is relatively even overall. I think I have great mons versus him, but he has also great mons versus myself. In testing versus Joey, we found that to be proven correctly as a lot of games ended up being uh, basically 50-50s. Like, I won some just by a hair, a fraction, he won some by a fraction, and it was just kind of that back and forth. Um, I do think that, uh, yeah, what I was saying was Great Tusk, Golden Go, um, Jolteon. Tinkaton, I think, is, is going to make an appearance because that Mon is a really nice response to, uh, I guess, Hoopa, I should say, because Zarud, while it is a Ghost Resistance, dies to Terra Blast Fairy and um, stuff like that, so... Tinkaton is probably the best sponge on the special side that he can bring, so I do assume that's going to make an appearance. Um, Quagsire is definitely possible. One of the reasons I'm not bringing um, my Quackable is because of the fact that he has Azumarill, he has Unaware Quagsire, he has um, Jolteon, which is naturally faster, he's got Zarud, which could be Choice Scarf. It's tough. It's definitely tough. Noivern? Oh, I definitely Noivern is an option, even though I have Ice Spinner, but Noivern's a huge threat. It's really fast. Speed ties my Mascarada. Yeah, there's a lot of potential options he can bring, but I do think that uh, Great Tusk, Golden Go, Tinkaton, Jolteon, and um, Azumarill are 100% making an appearance with the last Mon being maybe Zarud or Moltres. Moltres is a possibility for, um, you know, having a, a way to burn Meowskarada. In fact, I was actually Protective Pads, but I swapped to Heavy Duty Boots, which I think could come in handy versus potential hazards and getting chipped down and stuff like that. But yeah, I think... FizzDev Zapdos is probably one of the best brings versus his team due to the fact that the combination of Discharge, Hurricane, and Heat Wave kind of just tears through everything, right? Like, Heat Wave is going to be able to do a lot of damage to Golden Go and to Tinkaton and stuff like that. Just do uh, some consistent damage, weakening those so that Screamtail can put in work, have Discharge so, you know, we can potentially pair out alongside Static Mons such as Azumarill and Great Tusk, uh, the Static for Great Tusk, that is. Discharge is great for Azumarill and um, just mainly Azumarill, I guess, also just consistently versus Moltres and uh, potential Espeon. Hurricane I needed for that uh, Quagsire. It's a 2 on Quagsire, Fizdef, so um, have to bring that. And yeah, just a nice amount of bulk on this Pokemon to withstand hits and the longevity with Roost, of course. Uh, Screamtail is a really interesting set here with Booster Energy. I mean... Booster Energy Offensive, I think, is actually not seen as much, and I definitely wanted to bring this set in particular because it kind of covers a lot of stuff. If Pokemon such as Golden Go and Tinkaton are weakened, then a Calm Mind boosted Flamethrower will destroy them with a Modest Nature, and I can afford to run Modest because Booster Energy is boosting my speed, so I have enough speed for the Tinkaton just in case of potential Choice Scarf Tinkaton or whatever, if that's even a thing, but it's just mainly to outrun it. Even if I switch out and switch back in and Tinkaton is still alive and it's offensive, Jolly Nature, I'm able to outrun it. Um, we have uh, Grass Knot just because of Quagsire. Basically, every single Mon on this team has a way of destroying Quagsire, so we can essentially, if he brings it, result in it being a 6v5 per se because of the fact that we just have ways of destroying that Pokemon um, entirely with our uh, setup sweepers or just our attackers. 
Um, but yeah, I like Dazzling Gleam because it hits really hard versus stuff like the Great Tusk, the Zerud. Um, even like after a couple combo mines, you're doing consistent damage to Moltres, which resists. So that's always great. Um, yeah, I like Screamtail a lot. It's also a great check to boost your energy Great Tusk, which is um, a very likely bring. And um, oh, I, we got to talk about Chinese Fortress though. Look at Chinese Fortress here, 333 HP. And we got stats, EVs in every single stat for this Pokemon. I'm so excited to talk about this Mon because of the fact that we're also running a special attack on it with investment, 128 investment in Giga Drain. So Giga Drain Fortress can three hit KO a max HP Great Tusk. So that's pretty cool, especially a bulk up Great Tusk which, um, you know, would be able to withstand Fortress's attacks. Uh, and so with with the AV, Chinese AV Fortress, and the magic number 333, we can withstand Great Tusk. We have enough sturdy power to, um, you know, spin any of those Pokemon away with uh, its, our attacks here. Earthquake is great for Golden Go. Ice Spinner Oko's the Noivern. Giga Drain for the Great Tusk. Also hits Azu. Good Mon overall. Nice support mon, but it can be very offensive. So last three months, actually, I'm running triple triple AV. We gotta run the triple AV for this team. We got the Fortress, Hoopa, and the Ursaluna. Hoopa is naturally faster than Jolly Azumarill, um, just in case he brings that. Enough special attack to uh, destroy everything. And yeah, good bulk as well. Terra Blast Fairy for the Zerud. And also, I think Shadow Ball is just very consistent overall. Energy Ball for the Quag and for the Azu. Just more damage on those. And Psy Shock is for Calm Mind Jolteon which is definitely a mod that can make an appearance, and I want a way to break through any kind of Calm Mind user. Anything that boosts its spit F, we go right through with the Psy Shock. And um, yeah, very bulky mon. My best answer to Jolteon for this team, because Ursaluna takes super effective damage from Terra Blast Ice, which is a huge threat. However, I do have um, the AV, which can withstand at least one hit from a Choice Specs Jolteon. And um, yeah, Guts is there because of potential Flame Body from Moltres or any kind of status from Quagsire. I guess Toxic Spikes is always there from Hisuian Sneasel, which I haven't really mentioned at all. But yeah, that Mon is also kind of a... It's a fast Mon, right? So I guess it could make an appearance, but I don't see... Uh, hmm, maybe actually, if it's like Choice Scarf or something, it could be a little scary or maybe Banded. I don't know. Um, because I also could see it being support as well. In any case, uh, Trailblaze Ursaluna is going to be pretty fast after one. It'll be able to outrun Golden Go and stuff, and it's naturally faster than the Adamant Azu, so we can get a big hit off with Earthquake if we have to, and um, just good moves overall. The Body Slam Earthquake combination gets walled by a potential Air Balloon Golden Go, so we got Fire Punch to hit that Mon, and that's going to be the team. Um, along, oh yeah, I should mention Meow Skirata as well, is just there for the purpose of... Um, Having the ability to knock off items, Sucker Punch things is super useful, like uh, against Jolteon, which is naturally faster. Um, Flower Trick for mons like Azu. It's a great Azu check because it can withstand a plus six Belly Drum Aqua Jet from full HP. And um, that's the squad. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm going Overgrow. I should mention I'm going Overgrow because uh, I'm running Flower Trick, knock off Sucker Punch, and I think it's good to keep all of our stab moves. If we run Protean, we're changing our typing, and then if we go Flower Trick, we can't have Stab Dark. If we go Knock Off, we can't have Stab Grass, but Overgrow has Stab Everything except for U-Turn. Um, and yeah, so yeah, whenever the game starts, we will get right into it. I'm going to uh, take a quick shower, and then we'll hop into the game. So I'll see you guys for the battle, starting soon. Battle is about to begin. The final game of the regular season, before playoffs. Uh, hopefully we can end it off strongly, and for a change from last week, I am not in desperate need of a bed to rest in, since I'm much better from being sick, so we can take our time to think about the right plays, Outcome of this game doesn't matter for us because we're already locked into playoffs, but it does matter for our opponent as winning or losing ultimately decides their playoff fate. I, for one, would love to finish with a positive record, so naturally I'm going to play to win, even if dreams are ruined, though if you watch my team builder, you know that I'm bringing some absolutely fire sets. And since he would be a potential playoff rematch if he defeats me, I'm saving some of the other sets that I have in mind for this matchup for a later date. Now, I think we'll stay with the Cassiopeia music. Uh, switching it up from last time, I think we did Arvin or some other different music uh, for that one. But of course, naturally, if we lose a game, we have to switch it up to potentially get better fortune with the music. The music is the, the tune of either success or defeat. So let's try to get a tune of success this time uh, for us. But um, yeah, we're just waiting to connect, and it seems we have. Nice. 
Very nice. Okay, so let's see what he brings versus us. I'm very curious about this uh, this matchup. And he has here the Hisuian Sneasel, which actually I have not really tested too much against. So not sure what it's going to do. But the Jolteon, the uh, Great Tusk, Golden Go, plus the Tinkaton and Azumarill are Mons that I've faced repeatedly. And I knew would 100% be in this matchup. Um, in, in this match, I should say. In particular, but um, with that Hisuian Sneasel slot kind of being a bunch of stuff, really. In terms of leads, I have been primarily leading with Meow Skirata, though I could also see a Zapdos lead being pretty good here. Question is, what do you think he's going to lead with? I think it's going to be probably the Jolteon or the Azumarill, maybe even the Tinkaton. I do like Meow because it's great against the Azu lead, potentially. And, um, you know, Azu pressures the team quite a bit. So I do like the Meow here, and if he does lead with Jolteon, I think we can just go into um, Hoopa. Because it is a Terra Captain, and I do believe it's going to be Terra Ice. If it's Choice Specs, it's going to hit really hard, and easily to a KO, even an Assault Vest or Saluna. So have to really be careful around that Pokemon. I do see the Wind Con being Zapdos is really, really good for this matchup. I have Heat Wave for Golden Go, Tinkaton, and stuff like that, and Discharge for the others. And I also have Hurricane for the Great Tusk, too. So I think Zapdos, defensive Zapdos is going to be really, really good in this matchup. Um, but I'm really curious to see how this game goes. In testing with uh, Joey, it's always been like really, really close 50-50 games. Like, super close. Could go any direction. But we will see if challenging me is going to be his first mistake. Because if he loses, it'll definitely be his last. <laughs> it definitely will. Um, it's going to be the Jolteon lead versus Mascarada. And so... In this scenario, um, we know that Jolteon is in fact the Terra Captain that he's opting to bring because his other one was only Espeon, which is not here. We're going to go, I think, Hoopa because of the fact that I can sponge any hit. I don't think he's going to Shadow Ball here. It makes no sense. So it'll either be a Volt Switch or a Terra Blast Ice. And then we can kind of gauge the amount of damage it does to figure out what set it is. Because if it does a lot more than I expect, it's probably Choice Specs. If it doesn't, it's probably not locked in. And he's going to Terra. Nice. Okay, so I figured this as much um, that this Mon was just going to immediately Terra Ice to try to catch an Ursulina or something. And naturally being faster than Meowskarada is uh, quite scary, but we have checks. That's why I got a lot of AV Mons on this team. Terra Blast Ice is going to come out here. One of the possibilities that I anticipated and doesn't seem to do as much as the ones that Joey's was doing. So I don't think this is Choice Specs. To double check here, um, yeah, uh, 355 to 288 is definitely not choice specs. So I do think that he may opt to Volt Switch if he has it. For me, I think I could just get off a Shadow Ball. There's no switch in really to a Shadow Ball. I think Tinkaton is going to be the best switch into a Shadow Ball. Um, definitely gonna terrestrialize and Shadow Ball just so that I can remove this uh, typing. I think being a Fairy type is gonna be pretty good just so I can also switch into Shadow Balls too if I need to um, and just be a, a better answer to Jolteon in general and any other special attacker he has. Because we'll take less damage from Make It Rain than we'll do from Shadow Ball without Translation. We'll take better, uh, we'll take Make It Rain better with Translation from uh, Golden Go. So yeah, there's the whole switch. Cool. He's going to switch out here. I assume it's going to be Tinkaton. That was the one that was that Joey was going into all the time. Because it was able to take a hit from Hoopa. And he doesn't have a Shadow Ball switch in. So this is great. And that's going to be Tinkaton. Nice. It feels good. Like, I, I always say, you know, when you're in a draft league, like, actually doing mock battles and testing and stuff like that, it really kind of helps solidify patterns and knowing what to do in what scenario. Definitely recommended for anyone that does draft leagues to actually test your teams, if you don't do so already. But yeah, uh, we literally can utilize defensive Zapdos to its fullest potential here. And the fact that it took that much damage leads me to believe it's a, probably a bulkier set, for sure. I think it's a bulkier set. Though I am curious about the item. It could be a berry, maybe Shaka. For the Ursaluna, perhaps. Could be Shuckaberry, could be Akaberry. I could see that too.
We don't know yet. But I'm sure we'll find out eventually. Alright. Switching out. Strike twice. Zap dose. Knock off. Okay. Do we get a static? No static. Okay, so... Yeah, maybe it's protective pads. Who knows? Could be. But Heat Wave is definitely nice here because now I don't even think he has a great switch into Heat Wave, right? The Jolteon, while having Volt Absorb, now is going to be taking super effective damage from a Heat Wave due to uh, its current Ice Typing after Trasalization. So this is actually pretty good. Uh, he switches out here. Goes into what? This mon was the uh, Jolteon. Yeah, it was. Indeed. Let's see how much this does. Um, nice damage. Really, really good damage. So, of course, easily now in range of a Sucker Punch. And I think I just want to go Fortress here to um, predict the uh, Terra Blast Ice. I honestly don't really see um, electric moves being clicked at any point in time just because I have the Ursaluna. And if it's AV, which it is, obviously, my, my sets, if he thinks it's AV, which a lot of my Ursaluna sets have been, then, um, you know, it's always a great switch in if I'm anticipating a Volt Switch. I feel like he would always want to Terra Blast every single time until that Mon's dead, but we'll see. So we can bring in our nice little Chinese Fortress with the AV. Volt Switch. Okay. Well, I really thought it would not be a Volt Switch there, but that was cool. So he'll, he will get the Switch Initiative and the momentum from this uh, move right here, but it's fine. Not too much of an issue. Golden goes in. Okay. It's on an air balloon. Ah, okay. So we need to pot that balloon for sure. Um, I definitely think that because we're AV, I EV this thing to withstand a modest plus two nasty plotted golden goes make it rain. So um, we should be fine. And I don't think he, I don't think he'd want to click focus blast in fear of potential bulletproof. So what we can do is probably just fire punch this thing if he decides to nash the plot or if he decides to make it rain, we can just fire off an attack. Or even a trailblaze for that matter too. Nasty plot. Okay, cool. So I was tempted I was tempted to uh trailblaze, but I think I was fire punch here. I was like slightly tempted to click trailblaze, but I don't think it's worth it. I think just getting damage is, wor is more worth it because I'm thinking about the late game and I also feel like late game Screamtail with the booster energy and calm mind can do a lot of work now that Yeah, survival cool cool cool. Just need to see that. Um, yeah now that um, The Tinkaton and the Golden Go are weak plus one calm mind uh, flamethrowers can uh, Destroy these mods now, especially since they don't have recovery uh, Do I want to sack or Saluna? I feel like there's not much you can do at this percentage of HP, right? Mm. Like, I don't think it's worth going Zapdos, getting that damage, and then trying to pivot out and switch out, things like that. Probably not worth it, so... Hmm. Yeah. Because, like, right after this, I can revenge with Meow. I could get a big knockoff and just get rid of an item, pretty much. And according to the calc, I do knock it out after that air balloon is gone. Okay, cool. So yeah, I think I think I definitely will. Um, I think I definitely will sack here. Yeah, let's just do it. Make it terrain. Yeah, so we can bring out uh, Meowskarata here, I think, is the play. Fire off a good old knock. 
He switches out, okay. That is fine. And the Tinkaton comes in, so even getting this weaker is great for uh, the Screamtail. Ooh, it's Rocky Helmet. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm glad we got rid of that item. Do have to be a little careful of the Azumarill. Um, just because that little chip might go a long way depending on uh, if it's Belly Drum or not. But I definitely think we could just U-turn out into uh, like Zapdos or something and just knock it out. Zapdos is still, uh, you know, every time it comes in it's going to claim something, right? Super good in this matchup. Super, super good. Come back, Meowskarada. I choose you, Zapdos. So we see Stealth Rocks. That's fine. Um, play is obviously the Heat Wave. So we can eliminate this uh, Tinkaton. They play rough, they're a little faster because I am more defensive without much speed. They get static here, that's cool. Doesn't matter anyways. And that Mon is gone. Cool, so Tinkaton out of the way is great for Screamtail. I'll take that. Now that there are rocks on the field, I think it's gonna be tough to rapid spin due to the fact that Golden Ghost is still there. Even though its balloon is popped, it's gonna be a little tough to rapid spin. But we'll be fine. I have boots on Meow, so that might come in handy. I also, uh, I don't think I, I don't think rocks do too much to my team. I don't think it does too much. Jolt is back. Terra Eyes Jolteon is so good. Um, I definitely just think I keep going into uh, Fortress here because I have lost Ursa Luna. So, I mean, you lose nothing by clicking Thunder Thunderbolt now. Goes for Terra Blast. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, there's no way I live a Thunderbolt, I think, right? I, I might live a Volt Switch, though. I might live a Volt Switch, so if he does decide to do that, okay, Thunderbolt, okay, cool. That's fine. Yeah, I was thinking, like, if it was Volt Switch and I somehow lived, I could probably have knocked out the Golden Go there, but that's fine. Um, in this case, in particular, um, what do we want to do? Could go Meow and Sucker, but I'm kind of leaning more towards... Because if I go Meow, it's obvious that there's going to be Sucker Punch on it, right? Obviously. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to just go right into uh, Hoopa. And Hoopa can basically just Shadow Ball, get a knockout here, and uh, just put in the work, I guess. Because the mods that are remaining are... Um, okay, well, after this Mon goes down. So Jolteon's gone, Tinkaton's gone, so it's essentially the half HP or less Golden Go. Azu, Great Tusk. And Hisui and Sneasel. I gotta remember that Mon. I almost forgot about Hisui and Sneasel. Almost forgot that Mon was still there. It hasn't even come out yet. Um, but I do think that Meow puts in a lot of work. As well as Zapdos. We just gotta get Zapdos a little healthier. Because it, it's gonna come in and take rocks now that our heavy duty boots are knocked off. It's gonna be a little annoying. But I think maybe we can pull it off. Um, yeah, let's just Shadow Ball here, sack this Pokemon. He mementos! Ooh! Ooh! Okay, I think I know what he's committing to! I think he's gonna commit to the Belly Drum Azu! Oh, shoot! Didn't cross my mind that he could set it up in that way with, uh, Golden Ghost Memento, but he has to go... 
he has to get like good I can understand why because this game matters to him very much and he needs differential to uh help him better his odds of 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 playoffs um because if he loses he's out of playoffs the the playoff run if he wins then um you know he he overtakes somebody so he has to like I could see why he's trying to do this I could see why um he's trying to make a big uh a big move with with the setup here but um I think we have to get damage on this mon. There's no other option right now. We have to get damage here. So I'm going to go for it. As I'm sure Belly Drum's going to come out. Doesn't do much, but it's fine. He Belly Drum's here, indeed. And um, gets the boost. Eats up his berry, Citrus Berry. Yep, exactly. So he's going to Aqua Jet here, right? So we have to... Um, I'm going to continue to probably sack this mon as I was planning to do before. So now is the tricky thing. Now is the tricky thing, right? We have to really plan our uh, our next move here. I do think Meowskarada is the, uh, the play right now. However, I need to ensure that this mon can live. Let me do the calc. Um, okay, I am at 245 HP. I've taken one round of Rocky Helmet Chip. When I come in, I don't take Rock's damage because I have Heavy Duty Boots. According to this Belly Drum, probably plus 6 attack boosted, um, what is it, Adamant? Nature, uh, Aqua Jet. I'm positive that I can live this. With only a like a 12% or, or less chance of dying to an Aqua Jet, so very much in our favor. It's like, like hitting a 90 accurate move almost. Maybe an 85. <laughs> Let's go into it. Um, yeah, the boots are so clutch. That was a last minute change that Joey told me to make, it was to put boots, boots on Meow. Um, so I'm really glad I did that. Before I had like protective pads for uh, potential Moltres bring. But the boots have come in clutch because if I took another round of rocks damage, I literally would be dead right now. Still don't know if it will be or not with this percentage chance. And yeah, I do live. Nice. So in our favor, of course, as you already know. And if I had taken a round of rocks, I would have lost this game to the Azu. So that's the power of prep. That's literally the power of running the right item on the Pokemon, running the correct item, heavy duty boots. It saved us. So that was a really good call for us right there. Okay, and then we have uh, Great Tusk, which is going to be, I think, Booster Energy, right? Yep, Booster Energy, Protosynthesis. That's one of the scarier sets that I had to uh, test against. Booster Energy Tusks is really good. Um, and so I could Sucker Punch here, but if it's bulk up, I don't think that's going to be great for allowing this mod to set up um, with its speed boost. So... I mean, I don't think he would anyways, but I, I don't even want to just risk a Sucker Punch here. I could go Zapdos, but I do think after Rocks, I, an Ice Spinner would destroy me. I could go also hard into Scream, but I don't think it's worth doing anyways. I think we just sack Meow. There's only his Sweet and Sneasel left, so I do believe the combination of Scream Tails, Dazzling Gleam, plus Zapdos, uh, which can live any hit without taking any damage right now, I think, from these Mons. Um, so... Like, I'm tempted to sucker, but I'm just going to flower trick. Heavy slam. Oh, shoot. Heavy slam. Um, That, I think, does a lot to Scream Tail, though. I think that does a lot to Scream Tail. If he's like... Ooh. Okay, that's... Uh, shoot, that's a little tough. That's a little tough. But with my booster energy, because I also had the same idea of running booster energy, I'll get a huge hit with Dazzling Gleam off. Heavy slam is going to do a lot of damage to the Scream Tail question is how much attack does he have and can we live it because in certain calcs i've seen uh this mon being able to uh, oko me with heavy slam though i forgot uh exactly what evs those were we have also taken rocks damage as well so ooh, it's gonna be close like i told you this these these kind of matchups like especially like this one in particular is, oh, it's been like 50 50 every time i'm testing with joey it, it like it just leans in a certain direction and you never know what's going to happen until the very end oh shoot okay can we live this heavy slam 
We get the Gleam off here. Does some nice damage. Heavy Slam comes out. Oh, we ate that up. Nice. Okay, that's good. I swear I've seen it do more damage than that. Like, that didn't do as much as I thought it would have done. So the Tusk is no match for the Puff. Excellent. Last Pokemon is going to be... The Hisuian Sneasel. Which... It could be good, it could be bad. It all depends on the set, right? Um, my play, I think, is to go for the Dazzling Gleam. Get as much damage on this Mon as I possibly can. And then go into Zapdos and pray. Although now that I think about it, Defensive Zapdos might be able to handle this Mon, depending on what he goes for here. If it's Swords Dance, um, if it's Swords Dance, oh, it dies in two hits, nice. Goes with the Trailblaze, ah, okay. So even if it was Swords Dance, it would have gotten two KO from this range. This is obviously not a Violite. And, uh, but now he's faster. So we've got the Trailblaze, Shadow Claw. Good to know. Very good to know. So last Mon is going to be the Zapdos. This is so down to the wire. This is literally a close of a game as it possibly can get. Now, let's think about this. I mean, obviously I'll go into this Mon, but um, to kind of look at Hisuian Sneasel here, its best attack to hit this Zapdos with is going to be Gunk Shot. Gunk Shot, of course, uh, is a very powerful poison type attack. Um, and... Even if this Mon is max attack, it has to be Jolly. Has to had to have been Jolly to outrun my um, Scream Tail. So if it's Jolly Gunk Shot, after Stealth Rocks, um, you know I don't actually think it knocks me out. I need to see the HP stat it's gonna be at. Let's let's see the HP it's gonna be at, and then I'll confirm. Because I know for a fact if the Gleam did that much, the Discharge is going to be what I can use. So I'm at 175 HP. Which means that Gunk Shot I'm just out of range of. Literally out of range of Gunk Shot. And it misses anyways. Nice! We win the game. Because even if that Gunk Shot hits, we 100% live from the range we're at. It does like max of 40%. We're at 44 or something like that. Um, literally, we won the game even if the Gunk Shot hit. And I'm glad it didn't because we didn't risk a crit. So um, that's going to be GG. It's... MV, ah, very strong win to round out the regular season before playoffs. Um, if y'all could do me a quick favor, I have some Samsung Howl affiliate links in the description. Just click on those to support me for free. If you can do that, it'd be much appreciated. Joey, I know you're watching. Go ahead and show them how it's done. If you made it to this point in the video, um, of course, which I hope you did. <laughs> Hopefully. This is a great game overall, though. GG to my opponent, of course, and apologies for taking away your playoff dream, but I really enjoyed this this game very much. Like, the fact that it was just so down to the wire in the way that it was. No hacks, no influential, like, game deciding hacks turns or anything like that. Nothing nothing like that. No hacks at all was, was clean. And uh, it was just, you know, just super, super based on prep uh, where the heavy-duty boots came into play. Like, for example, if I didn't have boots, I probably straight up lost to the Memento plus Belly Drum Azu. And um, it just comes down to show you all what good prep can do in a game like this where you know both players are are solid and and it just comes down to the team when the matchup is as even as it gets um but yeah this is a great one to uh end off the regular season on and of course playoffs i don't think actually they'll be next week i think there's gonna be a break for one week for you all between uh, now and playoffs if i'm not mistaken um but if i am mistaken you'll probably know sooner I don't think I'm mistaken, though. But yeah, definitely, uh, if you enjoyed uh, the content, please do subscribe, though. It would mean a lot on our journey to 100k for 75, then 100. That would be the true MV birthday. Because, you know, y'all wish me happy birthday on Joey's stream. Oh, speaking of Joey's stream, literally right now after this, I got to eat dinner. And immediately after, there's going to be uh, a stream on Joey's channel for the Speed Draft, the AIM Rivals Speed Draft Tournament that I'll be a part of uh, by now. The video goes up on Sunday for this one. By now, it would have already gone up. So go back and watch that if you haven't already. Um, 
And uh, it's going to be fun. I'm excited for that as well because, as you know right now, or maybe you don't, I'm undefeated in Speed Draft versus Joey in like five games that we've played. But now it's an actual tournament that I got to try to win. So, yeah, so far, good day um, with this win and hopefully uh, a win in that one. So we'll see how it goes. For now, I'll see you all on the next one. Peace.